Hello and welcome back to my channel. So one thing you might be surprised to learn about me is that despite how I come across here on my channel as very motivated, happy, upbeat, positive all the time, that I struggle a lot with feeling unmotivated at times, being stressed out, overwhelmed, being lazy, like some days just feeling down and not wanting to do anything, like all of those spectrums of emotion. I actually struggle with something called PMDD. So for a full like seven to 10 days out of the month, I feel like absolute crap and it's hard for me to even get out of bed. So I've been thinking about making this video for a long time of my strategy and approach for getting through a rough patch, what really works for me. I hope that if you're out there and you need to hear this, it will help you. And if you don't need it today, then maybe bookmark this video, save it and refer to it later in the future if you ever are not feeling your best. So step one of the process is acceptance. I think a huge part of the problem is this hyper focus on productivity that we always have to be productive, doing the most, being the most, being happy all the time. But that's just not life. It is okay to feel down sometimes and to feel unmotivated and just to be having a bad day. Like that is okay. There's a quote that I read years ago and I always repeat this in my mind. It's just a bad day, it's not a bad life. And one of the all time best pieces of advice I've ever heard, it's from my favorite book called, You Can Be Happy No Matter What. And it is that once you have that awareness that you are not in a good mood, the most important thing you can do is not analyze your life or your situation. Because when you're in a low mood, you are going to color and characterize your entire life with a negative lens. Whereas if you're in a good mood, you're having a great day, you're gonna view your life in a completely different lens. And it's the same situation. The way you view it is different depending on the mood that you're in. You just need to have the amount of self-control to know I'm in a low mood, so I am not going to make any major life decisions or spend time analyzing my life today. Come back to it, circle back to it again once you're in a better mood. Step two is recharge. The way that I frame things in my mind now is I'm not down and depressed or unmotivated, I'm just recharging. That has shifted it in my mind to something that's a negative, to something that's just a necessity of life. Everyone has to recharge. Now, for as how I recharge, that's kind of the heart of this video. The first thing that I have noticed makes a huge difference is pay attention to how you're fueling your body, your nutrition, what you're eating, what you're drinking. That has a huge impact on your mood and your ability to bounce back. I read this New York Times article recently saying that when you're stressed or in any negative mood, your body craves sugar, but that's actually the worst thing you can do. It feels good temporarily. It's a band-aid on the problem, it doesn't fix it. And the best thing you can do is you wanna eat your vegetables and foods that are nutritionally dense. That is impacting your energy, your mood. Next way I like to recharge is to do whatever you can to get out of your head and in the moment. So think about what are those times where you are most in the moment and present. Maybe it's when you're gardening, maybe it's when you're listening to your favorite music. For me, it's when I'm spending time with my kids. I am just the most genuinely, truly happy when I'm with my kids and I'm in the moment because I'm focused on them, so I'm not focused on everything else going on in my mind. So see what's on that list and see if you can do any of those things today. The best thing you can possibly do to get out of your head and in the present moment is meditation. And I will admit to you, meditation has always been something that is very difficult for me because I have a lot of anxious thoughts. So the thought of just sitting there and doing nothing and being trapped with my own thoughts, like that doesn't sound fun to me. So I have found the only way I can really meditate is if I do it through a guided meditation using an app. I have the Hatch Restore, so there's guided meditations on there that I'll do before bed, that I'll do while I'm in the bath. I will force myself, even a five minute meditation, it is shocking because through meditation, you're also working on your breath work and just managing your breath makes a huge difference. The next thing I love to do to recharge is called grounding. And it might sound ridiculous. If you've never heard of this, you're gonna be like, Brittany, you've lost your mind. And there was recently a documentary about it. So I will link that below if you want more information. But it's just the idea of going outside and reconnecting with the earth, like getting your feet on the earth, on grass, on dirt. There is so much behind this and the benefit of reconnecting, having a calming effect, helping to reduce blood pressure, reduce stress. It costs you nothing, you have nothing to lose. So just go outside and 
have your bare feet on the earth and sit, lay down for as long as you can and see how you feel after. Because there's also a lot of research, I listened to a whole podcast about this, of the benefit of just being outside, being in nature. There is a healing effect to being outside. And in today's society, we just don't do it enough. The other thing I like to do when recharging, I call it productive recharging. And this is totally optional if you do have the energy. I will clean and listen to a podcast because I find that therapeutic and also helps me feel better because when my space is messy, it just makes me feel more stressed. So by decluttering, by cleaning up, I feel like, okay, I might not be doing the thing that I most need to be doing, but at least I'm accomplishing something. Recharging could also be as simple as resting, doing absolutely nothing. You might be watching a show, going on your phone. So what I would say here is just protect your energy and have the awareness of what you're consuming and how it's making you feel. If you're on Instagram and scrolling through and everyone seems really happy and you're down, that's just gonna make you feel worse in that moment. Or if you're watching a movie that's very sad or violent or negative, that might make you feel even worse. So during those times, if you are just reading or watching something or on your phone, what I am very intentional about doing is consuming something that is improving my mood versus bringing it down further. So now on to step three, and that is regroup. And the most important piece of advice I could pass along to you, and this has truly changed my life, is the idea of just taking a small step. This is the Jedi mind trick that will change your life. Sometimes if we set our goals too big, what happens is we talk ourselves out of it in our mind. That's gonna take too much energy or too much time or I really don't feel like it. But if it's such a small goal, usually you can motivate yourself to do just that. And what I find happens is once you get started, the inertia will take over and you'll continue and end up doing more than you expected. For example, if I have to film a video and I'm down and I don't feel like it, I'll just say, okay, you don't have to film the whole, whole video. You just have to do two shots, two little cutaway shots and that's it. So I'm setting my goals really, really small. I'm not overwhelming myself. I'm not having to hype myself up too much. Okay, it's just a small thing I have to do. It's not gonna take a lot of time. And then the second part of that is to reward yourself. So set a small goal, very small goal, and then set a very motivating reward. Maybe it's watching your favorite show or having some kind of a treat or even going on Instagram for 30 minutes. Once I get this done, whatever it is, in my small goal that I set, then I have the reward. Those two things coupled together is nine times out of 10, gets me back on track and gets me motivated again. Next thing about regrouping is understanding that whatever you tell yourself, becomes your reality. So if you tell yourself, my life is so stressful, I'm so busy, I don't have any time, then your brain is going to look for reasons for that to be true. So your brain will constantly be looking for stressful situations and to reinforce this idea that you are busy all the time or whatever it is. So tell yourself what you want to be true and your brain will look for reasons for that to be true. So for me, shifting my mindset from, I'm so stressed and I'm so busy to, I have so many opportunities. I'm so lucky that I have so many amazing opportunities in my life right now. Like that's shifting it to a positive mindset. I literally get chills when I say that because it's such a powerful shift. What is the narrative that you are telling yourself or others about your life? And is that the story that you wanna be telling? The other big thing also from my favorite book, one of his big things is life is not an emergency. So for example, let's say I'm stressed because I have this big deadline. Okay, so what happens if you don't meet the deadline? Is it the end of the world? In most cases, no. You can extend it. You can move things around. And even if you do miss it, are you gonna lose your job? Is everything over for you? Most of the time, it's not. So just going one layer further and questioning your own thoughts can really help make a huge impact. And last but not least, the thing I always like to do when I'm regrouping is I make a little gratitude list. And the way that I do that is I make a list of what are the things in my life right now that are going well, that gets me into a place and a state of gratitude. Because gratitude is one of, if not the most powerful thing you can do to bring yourself back and regroup to a place of peace and happiness and being your best self. So yeah, that is my three-step process for how I get out of a funk, how I get out of a bad day, and whatever it is in life, it will pass. Sometimes it doesn't pass as quickly as you want it to, but it always will pass. I will have my process written down in the description box below if you wanna refer back to it, or to save this video if you need to refer back to it next time you have a bad day. So if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you have not yet already subscribed. Thank you as always so much for watching and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye. 
Oh my gosh, Ryan. You're supposed to be watching the kids. Oh, oh. Uh, I'm not sleeping. I'm recharging. 